In this video, I'm going to show you how to use options to trade in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies to minimize your risk while maximizing your return. As you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, we like to use options to consistently generate cash flow and returns in our account. We've been doing that for a long time. Today, we're going to look at another use for options. I won't go into great detail about what cryptocurrency is, but I do want to make sure that you have the basic understanding of the underlying asset that we're going to be talking about in this video. The term cryptocurrency began to be widely used in 2008, but what exactly is cryptocurrency? Simply, cryptocurrency is a system used to issue tokens that can be used as a medium of exchange. This currency or medium of exchange is kept track of on a digital ledger similar to a digital version of a paper ledger. These tokens are issued through a cryptocurrency system. So how can you and I trade in this new type of currency? Well, we can go through the process of setting up accounts to buy it outright and then keep it in our own version of a bank vault. No doubt you've heard of people stealing other people's cryptocurrency. It'd be similar to having all the cash that you've accumulated stashed somewhere in your house. If someone finds out about it, they can break in and steal it. But is there a better, potentially safer way to invest in cryptocurrency? The answer to that question might be a crypto ETF or exchange traded fund. ETFs are something that we're all familiar with. For example, you most likely heard about the ETF QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ 100 index, or the even more popular SPY ETF, which tracks the S&P 500 index. So with this ETF, instead of owning crypto outright, cryptocurrency ETFs make it just as easy to invest in Bitcoin as it will be to buy a stock. Now there are quite a few crypto ETFs that you can choose from, and I'm sure this number will just continue to grow as time goes on. For the purpose of this video, I've chosen three of them that I want to briefly tell you about. Then I'm going to show you how you can use options to trade in that ETF that's our favorite one of the three to maximize your potential return while minimizing your potential risk. One fact I want to point out to you up front is that these ETFs, they generally charge a higher management fee than what you see charged with ETFs like SPY or QQQ. The three cryptocurrency ETFs that I'm about to mention to you have exposure to either cryptocurrency, crypto futures contracts, or companies that have significant blockchain exposure. That term blockchain is just the electronic ledger that records transactions made in Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. Blockchain is a way of maintaining a record of those transactions. Here are the three cryptocurrency ETFs that I wanted to share with you in a brief description of each one of them. The first is ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF, ticker symbol BITO. The BITO ETF made history in October of 2021 when it became the first cryptocurrency ETF that the Securities and Exchange Commission allowed to trade on a major US exchange. With this ETF, instead of buying Bitcoin outright for yourself, this fund holds various Bitcoin futures contracts. The big negative, in my opinion, with this ETF, besides the expense ratio of just under 1%, is that the futures that this ETF owns is simply not the same as owning Bitcoin outright. The biggest reason why I don't like this ETF is because of the futures contracts that it owns. You see, owning an ETF like BITO is the equivalent of swimming against the current in a river. The reason for that is this term, contango. Contango is a problem because if you keep rolling your futures contracts in a contango market like this ETF will do, it will eat away at your potential returns. It's kind of like swimming against the current in a river. In the end, you can be really right in the direction the underlying asset goes in, but because of contango, you may end up losing your money. And sometimes it's big money. As you can probably tell, I'm not a fan of this ETF. Over shorter time frames, it might be a good idea to trade in, but over the long term, well, I just can't support it. If you're curious about it, just research the work in Tango and make sure that you're comfortable with what that causes. Before I get to my favorite ETF of the three, let me share one more ETF that might be worth considering. It's the Siren NASDAQ Next Gen Economy ETF, ticker symbol BLCN. This ETF is blockchain focused. Remember, blockchain refers to the way that cryptocurrency transactions are kept. So BLCN tracks the NASDAQ Blockchain Economy Index. This fund does not invest directly in cryptocurrency, but several of its holdings have crypto on their balance sheets. Blockchain-focused stock prices have recently had a high correlation to cryptocurrency prices. But there are two things I don't like about this ETF. Number one, I don't like that a relatively high percentage of its top holdings are companies that are not even profitable. For those of you that are into growth companies, this might be a good ETF to consider. But for me, I prefer to put my money in companies that are consistently profitable. The other reason why I don't like this ETF is that as you can see here, there's just not much interest in trading options in it. Low open interest when it comes to options isn't a deal killer for me, but when it's coupled with companies that I'm not particularly excited about trading in, well, at that point, it turns into an ETF that I won't trade in. 
The third ETF, which I'm open to trading options in, and actually I'll give you a couple of my personal trade ideas in just a minute. This third ETF is the Amplify Transformational Data Sharing ETF, ticker symbol BLOK, and I'll just call it Block. This is a popular ETF that invests in businesses with exposure to blockchain technology. Currently it has about 45 total holdings, and its top 10 holdings account for about 44% of its assets. The Block Fund does not hold cryptocurrency directly, but several of its holdings do. One thing I like about its holdings, of its top 10 holdings, at this time, all of them are profitable. The other reason why I like this ETF is because as you can see here, there's a lot of open interest in the various option expiration dates and strike prices. This is an ETF that I would feel comfortable trading in if I wanted to get exposure to cryptocurrency, but I didn't want to bother owning cryptocurrency outright. By the way, if this has been really useful so far, then I would love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. So now the big question is, how would I use options to trade in this ETF? Let me show you. It's important to keep in mind that in my opinion, trading in cryptocurrency is a lot more risky than the companies that we typically trade in. As such, we'll only risk a very small percentage of our overall portfolio to do a trade like this in cryptocurrency. However, we're going to use every secret, tip, strategy, and technique that we've learned over the years of trading in assets to make the best possible trade that we can in cryptocurrency. As you can see on the chart, Block, like cryptocurrency, has recently been experiencing a sharp decline. On November 9th, it was trading for a high of right around $65 per share. Now it's come back down to just under $50 per share. Notice down the volume section on the daily chart that the downward selling pressure has been increasing. Now it's come back down to the red 200 moving average on the daily chart. I then look over at the weekly chart to see how that's looking. Here we see that the area right around 47 and a half is where the green 50 moving average is located at. So far over the life of this ETF, the area around that green 50 moving average on the weekly chart, it served as nice support for it. Now that is no guarantee that it will continue to hold a support, but if we're going to do a bullish trade in this ETF, I'm liking the way the technical charts are starting to look. They're not quite there yet, but they're getting close. So what are the potential trades that I feel comfortable doing in this ETF using options? First off, since in my opinion this is a risky trade, even though I'd be willing to sell a put option in this ETF, instead of selling a cash secured put option, I would sell a bullish put option credit spread. Based on the way recent charts are looking, I would expect Block to come down and test the red to a moving average on the daily chart. It may even break slightly through it, but if this technical area holds its support, then I would expect Block to decline to around the white line here, which should be around 40 six and a half per share. At that point, I'd be willing to sell a bullish put credit spread with an out of the money put strike price of around 45 or $40 per share. I would then buy a protected put for insurance below that, which didn't have much value, but provide us insurance just in case block continued to decline. Now I'm not quite ready to place this trade yet. And to be honest with you, I haven't fully decided that I'm going to do a trade in block. What got my brain going thinking about making this video for you was a request from one of our subscribers here. But share your thoughts with me. Would you like to see me do a trade in block? If so, please give this video a like or leave a comment down in the section below. If I were to do a trade in the near future once Block's downward momentum subsided, this is most likely the kind of trade that I would go with. And please keep in mind that this is not a suggestion for you. This is simply me talking through what I would feel comfortable with. If Block came down and found support at the red 200 moving average on the daily chart and that area held a support, I would consider selling the May $45 put option, which should currently pay us around $4.15 per share. I would then buy the May $35 put option, which should cost us around $1.13 per share. So we would put into our pocket a net of right around $3 per share for this spread. Now keep in mind that this May expiration doesn't have a whole lot of open interest in it right now. So if I wanted to trade in a position that had more open interest, then I'd most likely sell the options that expire in about 47 days on January 21st. Here you can see that that expiration has a lot more open interest in those options. Then if I wanted to be even more bullish in this position, I would use the cash that I received by selling those put options to buy either a call option or do a bullish call debit spread. He said that with the current prices, I'll receive just about enough cash from doing the bullish put credit spread to buy the May $60 call option. The question is, does it seem realistic that Block will make it back to $60 over the next 166 days? Looking at its recent chart action, this is a real possibility. However, if we want to increase the odds of winning on this bullish trade, we could always do a bullish call debit spread. We could buy the May $50 call option, which is selling for around $6.20 per share. The May $65 call option is selling for around $3.20 per share. So with the $3 that we we're able to receive from selling the bullish put credit spread, we could then use that cash 
to buy a bullish call debit spread and end up being out of pocket absolutely nothing when we initiate this overall position. As you know, when I buy options, I typically like to buy longer term options or leaps. So that would also be a consideration or a potential trade. Buying, for example, the January of 2023 $4 leaps call option, and that would cost us around $14.35 per share, while also selling some nearer term call options against it and or simultaneously selling some of the bullish put credit spreads that we spoke about earlier. When the time comes, if I decide to make a trade, I'll weigh my options, assess the risk, and run the return before making a final decision and placing a trade. If you'd like to receive alerts, we do trades similar to the ones I mentioned in this video. Consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more details on how much cash flow we generate monthly from buying and selling options, check out the video series at the link above and description below entitled Option Trading Monthly Cash Flows. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.